Okay, let's kick off. Um, welcome everybody to our August segment of Y Tutorials. This is a three-part series of text analytics workshop. And today it's our first part. Thanks very much, Mitra, uh, for hosting this for us. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a great session today. So <clears throat> it's all yours. Yeah. Thank you, Nabarita. Hi, all. Good evening. I'm Mitra. And I'm, as Nabarita mentioned, I'm going to walk you through the text analytics basics for today. Uh, yeah, so just trying to move the screen. Yeah, so the agenda for today is that, like, like the basics, like what is text analytics, what are the different applications, and we'll also have an overview of what are the different tasks because text analytics are very vast. So, what are the different tasks associated, and finally, we'll wrap it up with what are the opportunities and challenges in uh, performing text analytics. So yeah, uh, text analytics, right? So before going into that, like, uh, so uh, uh, like I think you will be familiar with like data analytics. Uh, so when we use uh, data analysis, we actually use like mostly tables, which is called the structured data. But for text analytics, we use uh, unstructured and semi-structured data. So unstructured is like mostly like just in form of text, like anything like reviews, anything which doesn't have a form, just free text. And semi-structured is in between unstructured and structured, something like HTML text. So those are like semi-structured data, like JSON, XML, uh, like forms of data. So, uh, so uh, using these kind of unstructured and semi-structured data to, you know, like extract insights and finding the trends and giving recommendations is called like text an text analysis and it's called text analytics. So it's basically the, you very much helpful uh, when it's like a large, like vast amount of uh, text uh, data, and then like uh, to reduce the time is like time intensive uh, and to also reduce the manual effort. And uh, I also want to highlight is that um, I want to highlight like like three different terms like text mining, text analysis, and text analytics. So these three terms are like very much uh, used um, interchangeably, but there is like a subtle, like very subtle difference between these things that text mining. It is uh, used like the pre-processing, the pre-processing uh, data like from unstructured converted into usable format uh, for computation is mostly text uh, mining. And text analytics is the use of uh, mined data, the usable data, and applying statistical algorithms and predicting and forecasting the results is called the analytics part of it. So uh, one interesting fact is that um, as of 2020, which is like before the pandemic, that is like about 444 40, zeta bytes of data which is like zeta bytes, I've never heard of it, but it's like almost like 21 zeros following the initial number. So it's like a huge amount of data present in the world. Uh, of course, I think this number would have increased tremendously after, you know, the pandemic and given the use of social media, given the use of the e-commerce and digital platforms, I think this number would have increased. And interestingly, 80% of the data is unstructured data. So that is like a lot of scope for text analytics in future as well um so moving on to applications right there are like a lot of different applications of text analytics some of the important or the most commonly popular ones are i'm just going to explain to you the i'm just going to start with uh sentimental analysis so here um so like the you can actually uh, use uh, like determine the sentiment score and then like uh, analyze if it's going to be a positive or negative or uh, neutral. There are like different scenarios where you can actually use this particular use case. Uh, one of the examples uh, would be uh, election results. Uh, like analyzing the election results based on the social media comments and in in link in Twitter, in Facebook, and analyzing how the trend is. Another one will be like the stock market exchange trend. So basically, if a company's review or if a company's uh, like you know the news is very uh, and it's not positive, then the stock might also get uh, you know like might there be a dip in stock market as well. So analyzing those kind of trends using the text and uh, also during pandemic, right? The emotions of how the people are reacting to pandemic, the COVID. So those kind of things can be done using sentimental analysis. And one more um, use case would be a 
brand monitoring for example if a particular brand is releasing a product then uh, reading uh, you know like analyzing the reviews and uh, improving those will also come under a sentimental analysis there are like a lot more use cases for sentimental analysis and the next one uh, will be like the fraud or spam detection so here um, like there can be like the patterns can be detected, which can be used in financial transactions, insurance claims and other domains as well. Uh, so it's like very much useful uh, when uh, like companies in uh, insurance claims and moving on to content recommendation. So uh, text analytics can be used here, for example, based on the browsing data, like what kind of keywords we use and the preferences and the, the ads can be recommended based on that and the products can be recommended. And the other one is automation and insight generation. So this particular thing, the example that I've got here is the healthcare industry one, where there are like a lot of past information and past uh, like details present. And actually text analytics can be used to identify similar cases, to recommend the diagnosis and the drugs and also the tr treatment uh, based on the past data using text analytics. And interestingly, I spoke to a person who's into legal field and um, uh, so this can also be used in legal field and any other field which is like very very text in intensive um the person in legal field mentioned that for any case uh, one of the cases that the person was handling he used literally he has to refer to 270 booklets of data and then like had to review for five days to prepare the uh, the proofs for the particular case so which is like very very uh data intensive so in that cases it can be automated and insights can be generated using text analytics and the other um, other use case would be uh, topic modeling so here in, in this case uh, it's more like clustering like uh, summarizing the data and finding themes and topics uh, one of the examples uh, would be like for example if there are like different words like soccer uh goals manchester united and cheslia then it would be come under football so like identifying topics uh and creating a theme out of it would be a very good example for uh for this and uh, in real world example would be like a chatbot where you can actually uh, where, where you can use as chatbots where the the whatever the message you give it can be grouped under a particular category and it can be like streamlined into that particular person uh, for example, customer tagging support tickets would be one of the examples as well. And uh, the, the other one example is customer feedback analysis, where uh, based on reading the reviews and uh, uh, reviews and other feedbacks, the, the product can be improved and uh, it can be scaled up uh, like so that the revenue can also be improved for that particular uh, product so these are these are just basic applications and there are like even more more applications of text analytics and moving on what are the uh, the overviews so text analytics is vast right so i'm just going to walk you through what are the different tasks or the subtask under the text analytics so i'm going to start with dimensionality reduction so in this, uh, a particular word can have like a lot of uh, different uh, usages. So for example, uh, the word maximize, maximum, and all these words, the root word is max, which is actually kind of uh, to like the bigger part of it. And another example would be uh, the word love can also be like used as lovely with uh, lovable, so like a lot of prefix and suffix added. So so by, by identifying the root word and uh, actually the size of the data can be reduced. So dimensionality reduction is one of the tasks of text analytics. And the next one is information retrieval. So the text, the, the meaning of it can be, uh, you know, like mapped uh, to a corpus, which is more like a database of the, uh, where all the different words and particular for a particular industry will be like, will be like there, where I can refer to it and then uh, map the meaning of the particular word. So information retrieval is also one of the tasks. And um, the next one is um, named entity recognition. So a particular word should be mapped if it's going to be a place or if it's going to be a, um, a, uh, a name so um or any other thing it have to it has to be like mapped to different entity so this is also one of the tasks of text analytics and uh, this ambiguation so which is actually like the, the same word can have like different meanings so 
the ambiguity has to be like you know mapped properly for example the the name the, the word ford is actually it can refer to a, the former us president's name but it can also like you know refer to the manufacturing vehicle the ford company so this is one of the examples and uh, the other examples would be like uh, back in india right like that is like the name uh, ganga and yamuna which refers to names but also refers to rivers so this kind of like ambiguity can also it should also be like properly sorted out like it's one of the tasks in ethics and analytics and um, document clustering uh, refers to again like uh, like you know like uh, 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 mapping and uh, clustering the data and organizing it into a bigger themes was also a part of the tasks in text analytics and uh, one other thing is co-reference which is um, like related to the noun phrases for example, um, I'm in a phrase like Michael uh, lives in Dublin and uh, he was born in Spain. And so that particular he refers back to Michael. So so the analytics reads in a way that Michael is was born in Dublin and Michael was born in uh, was in, is in Spain. So it refers back to that. So these kind of like there are like various subtasks, which is a part of pre-processing as well as it's a part of the actual process in text analytics. I think as Nabanita mentioned, um, this is the first uh, session and in the further sessions, you will get, you will deep dive into text analytics and what are the different techniques and the hands-on experience as well. And, and finally, moving on to the opportunities and challenges. Uh, so uh, in terms of opportunities, um, so since it's going to be like automated, it's going to be like very time efficient and more accurate, accurate, and it'll in turn reduce the manual labor hours. Uh, so this is one of the biggest uh, game changer for any industry and when any person who is using text analytics. And this will in turn, you know, like, for example, if a person uses text analytics uh, to understand how the product works and understand, uh, use the reviews to improve the efficiency and the experience, then it, it would eventually increase in revenue and other metrics they are calculating. So it's uh, used in that as well. Uh, in terms of fraud and spam, the increase would be in uh, decrease in losses and decrease in frauds. So like different metrics based on the business problems. And um, and so this uh, text analytics is also used in uh, understanding the customer needs. Uh, what are the current trends and uh, catering to the current trends is also one of the biggest benefits of text analytics. And in turn, improving the customer experiences and the customer and the, and whoever the end end users, customer, the employee, the experiences, and uh, uh, by personalizing whatever their needs are. So these are one of the biggest opportunities in text analytics. When it comes to challenges, right? As a data scientist, if anybody is going to ask me what is the biggest part, what is the challenging part as a data scientist, I would always say the data preparation part of it, than modeling or than recommending the data preparation. So here as well, the data preparation, the quality of it, the accuracy of it would be the one of the biggest challenges and also scalability because the number of the amount of data that is being fed into the system day by day, minute by minute is very uh, is increasing always so scalability and in, including the new data into the system and training on that so its scalability might also be an issue and uh the next one would be um integrating with the current systems right for example if it's gonna be a social sent sentimental analysis so you need to integrate the social media uh sentiment all those uh data and then connecting with uh your systems and like with different systems so integrating with the current systems might also be a challenge when it's going to be done at a great scale and um and, and exactly getting the context uh, because there are like different languages getting, you know, like how, um, you know, for example, uh, a millennials person using a particular phrase might be differ from uh, a Gen Z person. So like uh, understanding the context and, and the, the, the different standards and languages might also be an issue. So these are the, one of the main challenges. And the last but not the least is the privacy and ethics. For example, uh, a person, uh, you know, like working in, um, say, um, 
uh, say like you know like an insurance or health care on using text analytics in that there will be like a lot of uh, like private information the person's name and the age and a lot of private information present in those documents even in legal field so it has to be like properly masked and you know those kind of like information needs to be taken care of before like you know like putting into the system so these are the challenges when you perform text analytics yeah it's like a very short session session but then yeah these are the introduction to text analytics do you all have any questions i don't see any questions coming up but that was a that was a great uh, introduction to text analytics i think it was summarized pretty well um and you know stressing upon on the fact that uh, the key challenge in uh text analysis analytics is ambiguity resolving ambiguity and data preparation process and uh i think i think people uh, who work on it will be able to you know vouch for the different kinds of complexities that come in while you prepare text data specifically like there are different challenges for numeric but for text data it's um it's completely different and there are so many different variations that you cannot identify from one sample so you to go through like multiple samples to understand what is the length of that uh, what is the what is the length of uh, problems that can arise from the entire corpus right mm -hmm. yeah that's true like you when you mentioned about the sample size right so i read a case study where uh, for a healthcare system they actually implemented recommendations using uh, text analytics you know like the end recommendation completely using text analytics but then it was banned because the sample size was just was just uh, limited to that particular hospital so the sample size is like very low so i think uh, the sample size should be like very uh, diverse and very huge so that's also matters yeah um there's a question here what tools do we normally use for text analytics yeah tools um usually python and there are like a lot of algorithms as well <clears throat> but yeah usually python uh, i think people use python yeah yes python is one of the like main programming languages especially because python has a lot of support uh, supporting python libraries um i i don't know of any other uh, programming languages that support uh, text processing techniques as much as python does that's true um thanks um does text analytics we have another question does text analytics require a lot of processing power i think my understanding is that it does require but it also depends on the amount of data that you feed in but probably yeah. but i think you would be the best person to answer this <laughs> because you have worked in text analytics more than yeah so uh so for text analytics yes processing power required can vary from use case to use case it also depends on what is the size of the text corpus that you're using if it's a small text corpus and if the vocabulary is not as diverse then it will not require as much of processing power but if you've got uh sentences like which has got about 10 like not 10 like maybe 50 or uh, 50 words and you've got like 10000 samples it will take time for you to pre process it and at that time it will be a overhead for your memory overhead for your uh, computation and also if you progress on to using say deep learning techniques on text on text then it will it will be like you have to go for gpus and stuff otherwise you'll be running into memory issues um so yeah it 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 will require a lot of processing power um but it also depends how you you can also strategize it like chunk it out and um you use your like whatever is available to you uh sometimes data sets are not available for a challenge some of the websites do not let web scrape um sorry uh preeti i i don't i don't understand what do you mean by sometimes data sets are not available by 
a challenge. I think it's also data sets not being available and uh, data not being able to get scraped is also one of the challenges is what Preeti is trying to say, I think. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, data sets are not available. Uh, yeah. It, that's a, that's a common data science challenge. Like if you work in any, any, any field, any place uh, with data, accessing the data will be number one challenge and then training a uh, pre uh, processing the data data will be a second second challenge yeah so some of the websites do not let web scraping right um but you have you will like you know for, what do you need this for if you need this for practicing you'll have enough data on kaggle just to practice but for training data i mean you have to so if you for what purpose you're using if it's if it's from your company you sh they should you know procure like licensed and uh, agreed uh, data sets that they share with like proper privacy notes and uh, and you know conditions like that so uh, in that's that's the that's the second part of it let's say i need a uh, 10000 samples how much of them being synthetic is justified um if you need 10,000 samples, it depends uh, how much, uh, what, I would, I would say maybe 30%. It depends on what are you trying to do with the synthetic data also. I mean, do you need, why would you need that synthetic data? Is it for balancing out? your classes for if you're doing sentiment classification, for example, you've got positive and negative classes, you've got like out of the 10,000, 6,000 are positive and 2,000 are negative. Then are you trying to uh, make like 4,000 more samples for synthetic? That is not justified because that is going to pick up from the from the patterns of the synthetic data. In that case, I think maybe double double it up only and then reduce from the positive. Like it, it, it's pretty contextual question, but yeah, just in case of imbalance. Yeah, I would say, you know, doubling, doubling it up or adding one third would be optimal, but I don't, I don't know. There, there's some other people I can see this Lilia as well here. She's also an expert in text analytics. Like if you, if you want, you can comment on that. I'm sorry, I'm for putting you on the spot, but I think this is a very interesting question. Yeah, she she won't even listen to me. Uh <laughs> yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh hello everyone. Um yes, um that the uh, imbalance uh that's uh yes, uh, augmentation of data with synthetic uh, it's a technique that is used in some cases. Um uh, yeah, it depends how uh, rightly commented if it's uh data which will not be there during inference time, then it will add unnecessary noise. But uh, in case it's possible to generate uh, reliable synthetic data, and there are different techniques for that. Uh, for example, for textual data, um, I didn't do it for a while uh, because um, my recent cases I was, was mostly working with uh, uh, Nancy recognition and um, large language models. But when I did it um, some years ago, um yeah there are there are techniques um uh, to to get um uh, uh, data uh, like for text it's uh for it's a bit uh, hard to generate random text right but uh, uh for synthetic data in terms of text um, um i think yeah, it's better to gather real cases uh, from maybe different sources and use it for training because mm. uh, generating, generating uh, some synthetic data for text, um, if you know, for example, uh, what you mean exactly by synthetic data, uh, please mm. give them. Um, but yes, augmentation techniques exist. And uh, yes, um, it's a working strategy to balance classes. It's better balanced uh, data set than imbalanced. Um, but just uh, generating synthetic uh, textual data, it's not that reliable. In, in, in yeah, that's right. Sorry for this like long response. I <laughs> I didn't deal with this for quite a long time, and uh, I know. Oh no, that's fine. Yeah. 
but i think i think you put that quite correctly there uh it's it's not wise to just use like vast amount of synthetic data uh big if it's not available uh i think the first priority will be getting like actual data and uh, the synthetic one should be like you know some fraction of your total data or total number of rows that you have i'd say uh is does that answer your question for well, the comment just one comment that just came to my mind i um yes i recently uh, used but it's not a synthetic data it's data uh it's actual data but uh added uh specifically noise to it for example um uh, some um uh, mismatch of uh characters like on purpose in uh in words in order to capture if uh, there in actual case scenario, real world uh, examples, there would be some misspelling, mistypes in words. So to be able to train on them and to, to teach model. So that's possible technique. Um, you you yeah. falsely introduce uh, noise in textual mm. data and teach model to learn this uh, correct yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. So Got it. Yeah. Thanks, Lilia. Anna Banita. No worries. That's cool. Uh, so I think uh, we are close to uh, we are we are close to time. And thanks for the question, Preeti. Uh, this leads to um, leads to announcing our next session will be uh, held at six p.m. next Friday uh, with Lilia, and she will be going through the text processing uh, techniques and. Uh, tools and uh, probably walk you through some of some Python code as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and um, I I hope this was this was really helpful for you guys. And thank you, Mitra, so much for uh, taking the leap of uh, hosting this session. Um, and thanks everyone everyone for joining on a Friday evening. And um, all the best. <laughs> I'm sorry, Navanita, but before we close up, can we please share a poll and get some feedback from the attendees? Yeah, ladies, I'm going to share a poll now, and it would be really lovely if we can get some feedback from you for our future sessions. I see that some people are already answering it. Thank you so much. The feedback is really important for us to understand what our members need and to, to organize our next sessions. And thank you so much, Mitra. I think that was a really, really good session and a really good introduction. I hope that, like, as you know, this month is going to be on text analytics. I hope that we are going to see attendees in the upcoming sessions as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, that was I'm awesome. sorry so about the shouting, but that's my baby screaming on the side. <laughs> um, I think I can end the poll, maybe. Oh, there's. Perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Have a good, happy Friday. Thank you and have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.